Hello, hello, welcome back. We are getting ready for the last talk of uh, the quality assurance, quality engineering track, but not the last in Programmers Week. As a reminder, I'm Yana Kiran, your moderator for today, but Programmers Week continues with more talk after this. Uh, even today we have DevOps talk after, and uh, but those will have another moderator, so I do invite you to stick around. We have three more days this week with technical talks and a dedicated day to product, the first time in Programmers Week tradition, uh, which is next Monday. So stay tuned and join us in my connector for different uh, sessions. And nevertheless, we have Doreen today, one of the co uh, community leaders of the QA community. And his talk is a guide, uh, a few steps into Selenium ID. Uh, I will let him um, describe himself because I know there is a spicy there that it always, always makes me um, admire him uh, even more. Doreen, how are you today? Very well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Anna, for the- Great, let's roll it. Thank you for the nice presentation. Uh, so, hey, everyone, happy to see you all here. Um, today, we'll really indeed uh, going to be talking about uh, Selenium ID, which is a pretty cool test automation tool. Some of you might have already heard of it or even worked with it. Some may be absolutely new to the subject anyway. I hope, um, all of you get to benefit in some way uh, from this presentation. Even if just one of you learned something new today or had any kind of benefits really, uh, then it was well worth creating all this uh, content. Okay, now I don't know how many of you actually read descriptions of the talks and <laughs> this, this description in particular, but the promise was that uh, we will be creating our first automated test within, or actually in five minutes, uh, with the installation included. Now, since time is limited for this session, we won't really go into any complex or fancy scenarios because as this lady over here puts it, ain't nobody got time for that, okay? We'll rather be going through the basics and get you guys started. And then if you feel like it, you can go ahead and add uh, complexity to your scenarios. We're gonna fast track everything here. And, uh, <clears throat> Towards Sorry. the end, yeah. We don't see any lady. I know your slides, but we don't see them. Oh, I wonder why. Are they shared? I should share, yeah. That's a, that's a good idea. <laughs> there you go. This lady. Yeah, works now. So yeah, ain't nobody got time for, <laughs> for any complex scenarios and stuff like that. We're gonna fast track everything. And towards the end of the... Uh, of the presentation, I also have a uh, bonus scenario for you guys. It's a practical thing that might actually save you some money going forward. So make sure you follow the presentation until the end. All right, before we get started, a few words about myself. I'm Doreen Pop, as the label says it. Um, I have been with the Cognizance of Vision for the past 10 years now. I am a hybrid QA, which means I have experience in both manual and automated testing, automation with both um, coding and um, tools that don't, don't require coding. Uh, I currently, uh, I, my, my current role is a QA community lead, as uh, Ivan also said. And in my spare time, I also coach American football here in Romania. Uh, and I am a, a defensive coordinator for the Cluj Crusaders, four times uh, national champions. Uh, go Crusaders, uh, let's move on to the agenda for today. Uh, we are going to go over the Selenium tool set. Uh, I'll describe a bit what other products they have there and tools that you might um, encounter and need. And then we'll dive a bit deeper into Selenium ID, which is the main uh, story for today. We'll see its capabilities and then uh, we will uh, go and have a live demo. And I have the guts and the courage to do a live demo for you today. And I'm saying that because you, I think you all know how uh, things tend to go with live demos. They usually go south. south. I hope it's not the, uh, the case today, but uh, yeah, we'll go into a live demo. We'll install it together. We'll uh, um, build some scenarios. Um, and uh, during the talk, I encourage everyone to share your questions in the Q&A module. So, uh, then I can uh, go ahead and answer them at the end of the talk. So what to focus on during the presentation? For First of all, you're gonna 
um, learn new concepts, okay? Then um, what I would do um, if I were you was to ask myself, how would this benefit me? And, you know, during the, all this, um, this presentation, always uh, ask yourself this question, how would this benefit me and how can I integrate this into my daily routine, uh, be it professional or personal or whatever, uh, just, you know, try to uh, make use of the information that you find here uh, going forward. So let's dive into the Selenium toolset. These are the three um, icons uh, Selenium related. First of all, uh, you have the Selenium web driver, which is a widely used automation library. Most of you might, must have heard about it, or if not, then uh, you'll surely do in the future. Um, uh, as I said, it's widely used. It requires programming skills and you'll have to work with code for this one. It's usable with your preferred programming language and it's very robust and, and popular nowadays. Um, second one is Selenium Grid, which is a tool that enables you to run tests in parallel um, on multiple machines with different OS and browser configurations. And you can manage all of these uh, from a central point. So that's very useful. And um, but our talk is going to be about the third one, Selenium ID. So what is Selenium, Selenium ID? It's actually, of course, an automation tool, we discussed that. And it's actually a browser extension. Okay, so you can install this uh, via your add-ons or extensions or whatever they're called for your uh, browser. Um, it's supported on, it used to be supported only on, only on Firefox, but now it's supported on uh, Firefox and Chrome and Microsoft Edge as well. It has a uh, record and play. Um, capabilities. So this means you can click a button, record a sequence of actions, and then you can replace those and, uh, uh, you know, have your, have your tests run this way. It has a friendly UI. This was actually rewritten since the, the previous version of the tool, and it is open source. And that means you can go ahead and contribute to, um, to the tool. You can add add-ons and so on. Um, the capability, its capabilities, we were saying earlier that uh, it's, uh, it has a multi browser support. It has control flow, which means that you can add those uh, statements. If statements, um, you usually find, find those in um, programming languages. So if, else, while, all those loops and so on, you can also add them here if you wish. It has a um, built-in wait mechanism, which means that you don't have to worry about how fast your uh, test is running and whether or not it receives uh, or, or it sees rather a, uh, the element on the page. Those of you who are familiar with the UI testing knows, know that um, um, it's, it's sometimes a pain to um, run UI test because the elements will not load as fast as uh, the test required them. So then you'll have to use all sorts of, uh, of weights there. And this, this tool, you don't need to worry about that. It has the built-in weight mechanism because it weights. Uh, you can run your test from the command line uh, runner. So uh, this means you can open a terminal and run your test like that. And that as a consequence leads to the next point, which is continuous integration. Uh, you can uh, add these to your um, CI pipeline, Jenkins, or whatever tool you, tool you need. And uh, you can extend it with plugins. Uh, you can add data providers if you wish. They have plugins for that. You can create your own plugins if, you, um, if you're technical enough and uh, you wish to do it. And it has uh, this export functionality, which allows you to um, export your Selenium ID tests in... Um, and later use them in Selenium WebDriver. And we'll see how you do that uh, during the demo. Okay, during the demo, we will go ahead and start uh, with ins uh, tool installation. So we'll go from the very beginning, and then uh, we're going to dive into a few scenarios. Some of those, so, uh, the first one, we're gonna, we're gonna search something for something on Google. We're gonna access a certain result, and then we are going to assert something. We're gonna verify that uh, something is on the page. And then, of course, we will go through um, uh, the, the user interface and I will show you um, how to, you know, what those buttons uh, do and how can you find your way from the tool. And for our second scenario, we will um, actually build on top of the first and it will start using uh, variables for uh, those of you that are newer to this kind of uh, to, to automation testing in, in uh, general. 
Okay, everybody ready? Let's do this. I will just move. I will use uh, Microsoft Edge for for this um, for this demo. So what I did was uh, actually you can you can start your timers. If some if some if somebody actually wanted to record if we're doing this in five minutes or not, you can start your timer right now. So what I did was I went on. Um, Google and I searched for Selenium ID Edge add-on Edge because this is Microsoft Edge and this is what I'll be using. And I will be accessing the first uh, the first um, entry in Google and then I will click on get and add extension. So it's now installing and here it is to the right of my screen. This is Selenium ID. Okay, so I'm gonna click on it and this is the the interface and it actually, I'm provided with a few options in this menu. So uh, it asked me if I want to record a new test, open a project, create a new project or close the tool. What I wanna do right now is record a new test in a new project. So I'll click this option and I will name this project Programmers Week 2021. Click okay. And then it's, it asks for my base URL, so which uh, site do I want to open? And I said that I, I would like to go on Google. So HTTPS google.com and I'll click start recording. So right off the bat, it launched the website for me. You can see here that it was, it's saying in the um, lower right hand corner of the screen that Selenium ID is recording. So now what I want to do is search for something programmers week. 2021, and I am going to um, press the enter button or return button on Mac. This is important and I'll show you why uh, after. I will access the first entry right here. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I am actually on the page that I wish to be on. So what, I'm, what, what I'll do is make sure that, I'm, that the text here is displayed. So the way to do that is right click on your mouse, or two fingers on the trackpad of the, of the uh, Mac. And you see you have a, a Selenium ID um, entry here in your menu. Uh, this is available only when uh, your Selenium ID, ID is recording. And I will go to assert and then we'll go to text and click on it, okay? And I'll, I'll back, bring back my Selenium ID interface and I will stop the recording. And I will give my test name, Programmers Week, uh, home page. Here's my test. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and save this. Actually, I won't save it right now. And now my test is already uh, written by Selenium here. Uh, all I have to do is go ahead and play the uh, test, run current test. I'll click the button and then see no hands. It just does what I told it to do. And there you go. I have my first green test. I'm sure five minutes have not passed already and we did this within the five minutes. So congratulations. This was your first uh, automated test in Selenium ID. Uh, green is usually a good thing in automation. If it's green, that it means all your, um, all your steps passed. And um, what we wanna do here right now is I will um, guide you through the, the UI of the tool. So before we dive into what I did or what's the, all the test details, uh, let's focus a bit on here on the, um, on the left-hand side, uh, side of the, of the tool. Um, this dropdown lets you select your view. So in, if I wanna view the tests or the test suites or what's executing right now, uh, currently I'm on the test view and I can add a new test from the plus sign here and I can say test number two and add a new one and test three and so on. And they will all be added here, okay? And then I can go to, um, actually before I do that, I can rename test. So if I click here on the on these three dots next to each test, then I can rename my test, I can duplicate it, I can delete it or I can export it. Um, and actually I'll, I'll go ahead and just show you what the export button does. It brings up this menu and you can select uh, via these radio buttons uh, to export your tests so they can be usable with Selenium WebDriver, okay? So you can do this 
with a bunch of programming languages. You just select the ones that the one that you want, and click export, and then you'll just, you can use it in um, in WebDriver. I'm not going to do this right now. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to test suites, and we will rename this one test suite one, and we will create another one. So I can organize my tests however I want to. And um, again, using these three uh, dots here, I can add more tests. And again, I can rename stuff and um, settings, what the timeout should be for that particular suite. And if you want to run in parallel and so on. But what I want to do is add more tests. And here is a menu with all the tests I have created. And I would like to add them to my suite. So this is how you organize. You can have a smoke test suite and a regression test suite. And a, I don't know, it's suite for a certain um, uh, functionality. It depends on you how you want to organize. You can drag and drop tests from one suite to another. So you can, you can do this very nicely. And you can just click the X button if you don't want a test to be part of a suite anymore. And if I go to executing, this was the test that was executed. So uh, it's the only entry there. Okay, so this was for organizing. Um, what these buttons on the top do is, I press this one, if you remember, um, it's very self-explanatory, it's the play button. So you run the current selected test. The one previous to that is when you get to run all of your tests here, if you want to do so. Uh, the step over current command is used in um, in debugging, um, and uh, we actually we'll get to debugging later. And the uh, clock here allows you to run uh, to 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 um, adjust the speed of your test, so you can run them really slowly and return very fast, as fast as they can. If you I don't know if you have a, if you're working on some sort of simulator and um, you'd like to. You know all the commands to be run uh, just like a human would do um, the, the actions then you might not want to go as fast as possible you just want to go slower but if you don't care about that and you just want fast results then you just um, use the fastest uh, setting here and at the top you can create a new project you can open a new project these are standard icons save project and um, some help references these actually open a new web page and uh, you can find out what's new or get help on the internet. Um, breakpoints, again, uh, they're um, debugging uh, related and pause and exceptions. Well, an exception in automation and encoding and uh, programming is uh, if you get an error, it's a fancy way of saying an error. Um, so if you wanna, if you get an error, then you wanna stop. And this is the record button that you wish to press in order to generate generate your tests automatically. So you click the record button, it launches your um, your your website, your base URL, and then you just record the steps. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, a fast uh, a crash course on on Selenium ID uh, UI. Let's go ahead and see what the test itself did. Okay, so here's my base URL, the address to which I would I want to uh, run my tests on. And the first command is open and a slash here, which means that it will open the base URL without any other sort of uh, things um, after it. Um, an example here would be in, if you want to go to google.com slash search slash whatever it's, I know it's not the correct URL, but just as, a, as an example, then you still do google.com here without any slashes and then everything that comes after it, it has to go here, okay? Then it sets the window size, the, the height and width of the browser. So I want it to be uh, wide. And then uh, what I did was I typed in the target element, which is identified by the name equals Q and this for you beginners, this might be a bit, um, a bit, um, too technical, but let me show you click, uh, quick what it means, google.com. We're not going to go too much into um, locators and such because yeah, that can be a separate talk. But basically, um, every automation tool needs to know how to interact with all, all of these um, items on the, on the page. And the way they do this, if you right click again or uh, two fingers on the trackpad and go to inspect, 
then you see here all of the elements on the page. Okay, if I if I if I um, move my mouse here, you can see exactly what each lines each line means and uh, where to find it on the page. So what I did was actually go. Let's go to the because we were interacting with this search um, search bar, and this search bar uh, has the name. Uh, let me see here. You see, name equals Q. This is how it identified that particular element on the page. And what it did was, okay, which is my target? I'm gonna type type something. My target is the element that's uh, identified like this. And now I want to type Programmer Speak 2021, which we did. And after, I told you if you remember that it's important, I told you that I pressed the enter button or the return key uh, because I could have used the, uh, the Google search here, but I didn't. I wanted to press it on the keyboard. This is how uh, you reference your buttons from the, from the keyboard. You use variables and key enter means that I, I pressed the enter key there. And then uh, what I did was uh, it, it took me to the results, results page and um, I clicked on the web element that was identified like this by the CSS selector. And then I asserted the, that particular text to have this, um, this, this exact test, a, a text which I was um, expecting there. Now, a nice thing is that uh, these are all generated automatically. You don't need to go ahead and um, search, look for these, but you can do that if you want and manually write these. A nice thing is, again, is that it actually has more locators for the same element. Okay, so one is name equals Q, which is the, I guess, the fastest in this case, or the easiest to find. And then you have the X path, which is not that reliable. Um, so there are more towards the bottom. And in case one of these elements fail, then it will just go to the second. If this fails, it will go to the third and so on. Um, okay. So, Again, with your steps, what you can do by pressing on these uh, dots, you can uh, cut steps or copy or paste, duplicate. It's a regular thing. You can insert new commands here if you wish to. You can clear everything, breakpoints. Um, by the way, breakpoints. I, I was uh, promising that uh, we'll, we'll go through debugging a bit later. Uh, this is the time. So if you click on, on uh, the number here, then um, this is a breakpoint. And when you run your test, it will stop where the breakpoint is. It will pause the execution of the test and you can see whatever you have uh, on that particular page at that moment. And then you can, um, you can use this button to go to the next, uh, to the next step and see what's going on there and so on. Um, then you have all of these toggle breakpoints, play to this point, so you can play only to, well, I don't know, to this point and your, your uh, to this point and your script will just pause there or you can add to your test by recording um, new steps and you can play from here. It's pretty, pretty nice. Um, now this was this was the first scenario and it was very fast to do because we use the record and play functionality. What I'm gonna do is here is introduce start introducing variables. So I will I clicked Command C or Control C, which is copy and then paste, and I have duplicated my um, the step and I'm gonna drag it here. And what I want to do is again open Google.com, and I would like to. Um, store this text in a variable, okay? So this text over here, whatever he finds here, I wanna store it in a variable and then I wanna go on Google and search for this, uh, the value of the variable. So in order to do this, I actually, before opening a new one, I would have to store, store text, store text. And this is the element that it needs to find. Okay, the one, the, the text here. And I would like to use, uh, I don't know, variable title, variable title sounds about right. And then I wanna open the page again. So Control C and V, open the page again, and then again, type 
in that particular um, um, text box. I would like to not type program as weak anymore. Oops, let me get this back. I don't wanna type program as weak anymore. I wanna type the value of the variable, okay? So this is how you reference variables. You use the dollar sign and the curly braces and now you do this. And then I wanna pause, pause, just to see the result, okay, pause. And immediately as I wrote pause, this um, nice um, alert <clears throat> uh, came and uh, it lets me know that, hey, you can use other types of weight mechanisms because pause, you don't really wanna use pause and hard coded pauses because it, was just, it would just slow down your script, right? They have other ways of waiting for certain elements and uh, pause is not uh, really recommended. But for our, for our, for this scenario, it's not that big of a deal. You just wanna wait 10 seconds. This is in milliseconds. So you wanna write 10,000 here. And then I will run my test again. So this is the first part of the test. Oh, I paused. Yeah, this is this is a demo of the debugger. <laughs> so yeah, the test was actually paused in my debugger. I have to get this and remove this and rerun the test. Program is weak. This is the previous uh, previous scenario. I'm looking for that this text over here, and now I will open Google again. And there you go. I search using my variable for the text that it found on the previous website. And now we're waiting the the ten seconds that. Um, that we gave it everything, everything is good here, everything passed, so it's all green. Um, let's go a bit through all the commands that you can use because you see you have a wide uh, list, a really long list of commands that you can play around with. So you can um, assert certain stuff uh, that, uh, I don't know, that a certain ch uh, checkbox is checked or that a field is editable or uh, it's not editable, why not? You can assert a certain text. Uh, is that text uh, uh, on the page or not? Um, you can use uh, the check action for check boxes to click on them. You can click, of course. Uh, you can close the, um, the browser window. And then here you go, double click. Um, I was telling you about the control flow, else and else if. Um, you can execute other, other scripts or you can integrate if you wish, you can integrate previous steps, pre previous tests, sorry, within your test. So all of this, all of this here, I could have uh, just referenced uh, by using a single command. Instead of having all of these six steps over here, I could just have a single step and referencing the um, existing, st uh, existing test there. Okay, mouse down, uh, this means that you just click on the mouse, but you don't release the click. Um, certain um, actions trigger on that. Um, remove the mount, mount mouse, uh, open other pages, pause, you know, the remember the hard code pause that we use here. Um, and you can set the, the, the speed of your test or send keys. This is the send keys action. Send keys means that you type something, uh, sorry, not you type, this is the type. Send keys is that you would press certain um, keys on your keyboard, for example, the enter, which I did there previously. You can set the window size. You can use this, um, I guess, if you have a responsive app, you can play around with the size of your window to see how it looks in mobile view or in tablet view, and then go again to, um, to a wide window to see if it, um, um, it looks different. You can store variables and JSONs and so on. Um, a lot of a lot of stuff, and then there's this verify section, which looks a lot like the assert we were using. So assert is a certain thing is so verify if a certain thing is editable or not editable. Editable. So the difference between asserting and verifying here is um, if an assert fails. So um, if if the text this text wasn't here, then the whole test would stop there. It was failed. Uh, the execution would be stopped there. And that's it for the test. But if you use verify, it's kind of a soft assert there. So it, it shows you that it failed, but it goes um, um, beyond that and it, it executes the next steps as well. And then here are the weights that, uh, you know, the, the nice kind of weights uh, for element, wait for element to be editable, um, to be visible. For example, if you are expecting to see something on the, on the, on the page, you wanna use this and so on. 
So these uh, you you can you can um, browse through these on your own and see how they can benefit you. All of these. Um, so this was the 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 two demo scenarios in a nutshell. I'm not sure if I missed anything here or not, but I think we went through all of the all of the UI. Um, now I was I was um, advertising, let's say, a um, special demo of a special scenario. And um, this is because uh, I thought of this uh, recently. The thing is that Black Friday is coming around, okay? So uh, usually um, what I find myself doing on Black Friday is, you, you know that some sites, if not most, will have some sort of Black Friday uh, banners and their offers, their offers won't be active until a certain hour. Um, so their site is not accessible there until that particular hour. So what you find, or at least I do, I find myself doing is keep on refreshing the page over and over again until the sales start. And so I make sure that, you know, I'm among the first to, uh, to get all the, to see all the discounts and the offers and uh, get the, whatever I want for Black Friday. And that's pretty annoying to do and, you know, to keep your eyes and then uh, keep refreshing manually and so on. So what we're going to do now is we are, I created this script over here, which is called the Black Friday refresh. I should have said refresher. Um, what I did here is created a tool that, or rather a script that will refresh uh, the page over and over again. And this Black Friday, I will have, um, I don't know, breakfast or something. And I'll just look for, um, at my monitor every now and then, and then um, I don't have to do anything manually. It will refresh uh, itself. And then when the um, sales start, I will be there to uh, jump on them and get everything I need. So what I did here was um, I put, I said, I'm, I didn't really use any uh, e-commerce website. I just used the Cognizance of Vision Events website that um, uh, maybe you're watching the, this talk on. Um, and I, I opened this and then I did a slash programmer suite because this is the complete URL. And then what I did is this block over here, you can see the, the two uh, steps here are a bit indented there to the, to the right of it. Uh, I will run this block 20 times, okay? And then this is how I, I, end, I end this execution and I move on. And what I'm doing here is I am um, using this script window location reload. Okay, you can just write just plain text here, window.location.reload. Um, and what this is going to do is refresh your page, and then we're going to wait five seconds, okay, between each refresh. What you can do extra um, in this uh, in this scenario is you can add you can you can use verify instead of assert here. You can add another command and use verify that. But you have to do this the day before. Um, verify that I don't know the site logo is visible or the search bar or whatever something that um, um, allows you to to know that the sales have started and that the, the banner is gone. Or rather what you can do is verify that the banner is gone, <laughs> even easier. Um, so you can run this 5,000 times then, and when this uh, banner is gone, it will just, uh, you can stop the script. So let's see how it goes. I'm entering on the website, no hands again, and watch as it refreshes every five seconds. You can use whatever you want for your configuration. And um, you see here, you can see that um, the site is being refreshed. So this will be very convenient, this black, upcoming Black Friday, at least for me, you can build your own scripts, you can do whatever works for you. Um, that's, that's totally fine. And then this other half, it's basically the same thing. So it's a, it's, a, it's a different way of writing the same text. Instead of executing script and using window location reload, what you can do is open, you know, slash programmers week, which is exactly this first step. And then it does this absolute same thing. I just wanted to have both of them here so you can see two ways of um, writing your code.
Okay, so there you have it. Selenium ID for you. Let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. Let's have a quick recap. We've reached uh, the end. As I told you previously, this was just about the basics and you uh, getting you accustomed to the tool and um, showing you the basics. And that now you can go ahead, download it if you didn't do so already, and you can build your own scenarios. You can um, integrate this um, into your daily uh, life on the project. Or uh, you know, you can just uh, you can just add on the, on that. Um, um black friday scenario so it will benefit you and you get the products i want before me so as a quick recap uh what we did today we've seen uh the uh, what are the available selenium tools uh we dove a bit deeper into the capabilities of selenium id uh, we wrote a few tests ourselves we've used variables we used refreshes we've prepared ourselves for the upcoming black friday um and now it's time for questions. Donna, do we have any questions? Okay, till now, no, but uh, well, we do have one, sorry. Um, we do have uh, an interesting one, I would say. How do we automate a capture? Is there a way to automate a capture? Uh, th th this is indeed an interesting one. I don't have a solution currently with Selenium IDE, but I'm, this not, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Uh, what you can do is find out on your own. And this one I'm saying, uh, try to uh, integrate this if you can in your, um, in your uh, own problems and find solutions. And then why not? Uh, we can come and learn how to, how to do that in previous talk, in uh, future talks, sorry. Yeah, I was thinking that you said you don't have a, a solution at hand. I was like, hmm, the next topic for the next presentation. Yeah, why not? I mean, I haven't automated captures with Selenium ID, so I don't really know where to uh, where to start. But I, this this doesn't mean that it can't be done. We'll yeah. just have to find out. We will all become robots. Ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> We're all robots, humans. No, that's a, that's the capture purpose. Uh, all right. Kids. Right. Uh, uh, I'll give it another minute. Uh, don't uh, forget you can add your question in the chat in my connector and we will uh, have it here. Okay. We're saying something like... Yeah, just, uh, just to add uh, uh, something um, uh, else. Uh, if While we wait for other questions, if there'll, there'll be any, uh, you can go ahead and find additional documentation on the tool. It's at, on their website, which is right here at Selenium Dev slash Selenium dash ID, you'll find, maybe you'll find the answer to your question there. Uh, this is the website Selenium Dev, where, which also has uh, info on the other tools that I presented earlier, like only briefly. So if I sparked your uh, curiosity, then uh, just go ahead and, and start, start automating. That's a really good advice. Uh, we have lots of thank yous. Uh, so I think we can end on this note. Uh, let's just start automating. For the audience, use the thumbs up and applause door to show a story of support for the talk. Doreen, thanks so much for joining us uh, today. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Happy automating. <laughs> we take a break from the quality assurance and quality engineering talks, but the thread, the track uh, continues with DevOps um, session. See you later tomorrow for the .NET talks with me as moderator, but for sure, check out the agenda for more inspiring tech talks that our colleagues are doing. Happy Programmers Week.